What time is it? It's mailbag time. It's Friday. It's time for the Dirt to Dust mailbag presented by Outlaw Off-Road. Uh, Doug Langford, your host here with Caleb Forbes once again. But um, we're going to do a little something different today. We are going to put out a little a little special episode. Um, idea idea credit to Mr. Caleb Forbes. It's, it is Friday, but it is Friday, uh, March 22nd. And on Saturday, March 23rd, a little thing called the Easter Jeep Safari is kicking off in Moab, Utah. Uh, I feel like I should be sad that I'm not there, but I'm not. And we'll talk about that more later. But we are going to do a special little episode just about EJS. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty cool. I think a lot of people know about it. They get the FOMO from not going. They see the stuff on social media. But there's definitely a lot of, you know, I know it's this wheeling thing out in Moab. But I don't really know what it is. So we are going to take care of that. We're going to dive in. We're going to talk about EJS on this special Friday edition of the Dirt to Dust mailbag. Let's get on it. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? <laughs> This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts... Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. And welcome back. Like Doug says, today is Friday. It's mailbag day, and uh, it is definitely a special episode day. And this is something that I struggle with every year uh, when I'm not there is uh, EJS FOMO. Uh, Doug, do you have FOMO this year? I don't. I, I, I really, honestly, I don't. Um, I got tired the last couple of years of getting snowed on. So I uh, yeah, I can see that the, the weather changes the last couple of years have been kind of wild. Um, even since I've been going, like you'll have a day where it's, you know, 32 degrees and all the topless and doorless rigs are, are hating life. And then it starts snowing. And then all of a sudden, you know, the next day it's 85 degrees and it's back down and back up. It's just a little too crazy. Um, but let's talk about, uh, EJS today. So first of all, what's EJS? I know that's an acronym, but. We, uh, we use it quite frequently, but what is it? Uh, Edgar Jones, man. Edgar Jones sucks. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Edgar, Edgar Jones. <laughs> uh, no, EJS is Easter Jeep Safari, and obviously it is around Easter, but it is the week prior to Easter um, every year, which is kind of the reason the weather um, has been weird the last couple of years because they are – it is the week before Easter. So based on the way that Easter falls – it can be kind of like it is this year. It's really super early because Easter falls super freaking early based on Good Friday and all that. So you can't really physically control the calendar. So um, they've always done it the week preceding Easter. So based on the way that Easter falls, it could be the end of March. It could be the end of March into the beginning of April. It could be all in April. And this is really a kind of a transition time out there in, in the desert, in Utah, in Moab, where the weather changes dramatically week to week as we get in to the spring. So, you know, like next week I looked at the weather and down at, um, at, at base Moab elevation, which is, I don't know, like 2,000, 2,500 feet, something like that above sea level. Uh, the, the lows every day are like mid thirties and the highs are, I don't know, it's the desert. So they go way, they go higher, but most every trail in Moab starts low goes high. Like that's just what it does. It starts in a ravine. It starts in town. It starts over by the, by the river and then they go up. Well, anybody knows the further you go up in elevation, the colder it gets. So you get what we got last year where, you know, we'd start out the day and it's a little cool, a little cloudy. But then by the time you're up on the top of Moab Rim or Metal Masher or something like that, two, three, four thousand feet above where Moab already is at high desert, technically. Yeah, you're getting snow. So that that, you know, I want to be there. You know, my friends are there like I want to be there. Um, I don't have the FOMO only because of the weather. and you know, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit because I am heading out there in a few weeks for Mob Moab, too. So that helps my 
Oh, yeah. If I didn't have that, the FOMO would be strong. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's something that's clearing up my FOMO, too, is, is this is the first year that I've been like, eh, that's cool, but, like, I'm not missing anything. Now, if it's I were so if I were to be missing Mob Moab and this, I would definitely be feeling left out. But we'll talk about Mob Moab on another episode because that's going to be really cool um, in itself. Um, but how long, I mean, I know this has been kind of like, it said Easter Jeep Safari is like the mecca of, uh, of, of the Jeep guys. Um, how long has this been going on? You know, dude, I have no idea. <laughs> the, and, and it's not like I'm not versed on Easter Jeep Safari. I just, you know, Easter Jeep Safari is run by a local four wheel drive club out there. Red Rock four wheel, Red Rock four by four, Red Rock four wheel mm-hmm. drive. And they've kind of been doing, I, they, it's been a long freaking time. Like it's been, it, because I don't know is because it's been that long. Like I can't pinpoint a year. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. But know it has been a exact long. Year or not. No, I don't. I've been going for what ten years or so, yeah. something like that. Yeah, I mean, but it's, been, it's going been going on way longer than that. Oh yeah, it's been going Decades. on long enough that yeah. I've seen pictures of <clears throat> groups of flat fender willies and nothing but CJs and full size jeeps up there. So, um. What's the, uh, is there a benefit to going out to EJS or, or is it just more of like a trail ride kind of deal? Uh, it, so if you're going as kind of a, a regular civilian, um, you're going to, you're generally going to register for one of the, the, the red rock rides mm-hmm. and you're going to go with one of their guides. They're going to kind of, you know, they shut the trails down, um, and they're going to take you out there. Uh, and they're going to show you Moab if you've never been there before. So if you've never been there um, and you go, I think they charge like 50 bucks or something like that to go on a course. But they're going to take care of everything for you. They're going to show you where to go. They're going to tell you where the trail is. They're going to show you all that stuff. Um, so I think that's good if you are kind of doing that Mecca to Mecca transition to Moab type thing. Mm-hmm. You've never been there. You don't know anything about it. You just know what you see on YouTube. Um so that's kind of one side of it. The other side of it, which is much larger than people think, is, I guess, kind of the rebel side of we're not doing any of those Red Rock organized group rides. We're going on all the trails that aren't being used by Red Rock on a daily basis. Um, and we're going to go do, you know, some companies go out there and do their own rides. There's a ton of rides that are put on by companies. Um, you know, distributors will go out there and invite their customers. Manufacturers will go out there and invite their customers, their dealers, stuff like that. You know, there's there's all kinds of companies going out there and doing kind of side rides, um, side parties, that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. there's really just if there's something for everybody out there for sure. Um, if you've been out there and you've experienced it and you know where it's, you know, kind of no Moab, you can get on, on kind of some of the side rides or something like that, especially if you're in the industry. It's a lot easier to do that um, or just keeping your eyes open for kind of the public invite type stuff. But. There's tons of different stuff to do all the way from I've never put my Jeep in four-wheel drive and I just want to go to Moab to I've been going here for 15, 20 years and I'm just going to hang out with my friends. Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely see there's a benefit to both sides of that. I think I'm more on the uh, let's stay far away from the Red Rock four-wheelers group and let them do their thing. I don't want to intrude on them at all, but I also don't want to sit on a trail with 60 different vehicles and sitting there all day. I would much rather do uh, Pritchett or do something fun with uh, with one of our rides that we kind of help put together. Um, and speaking of Pritchett, but let's, um, and we could talk about, <laughs> I think we could talk about EJS for a very long time, but uh, what are some of the like quintessential trails that you, you would say we got to hit if you're out of there? It, it depends on your level. For me, when I go out there now, um, I, I just, I always want to hit Pritchett and I, I mean, it's one of my favorite trails. So I just like Pritchett because it's kind of, reverse of what you typically get at Moab. You know, and I talked about the weather saying, oh, well, you start low and end high. Pritchett's different in that you're in the canyon the whole time. And you really don't get out of the canyon until the very last obstacle, Yellow Hill. And that is basically the end of the canyon where you're coming up out of the canyon. And there's not a lot of trails like that in Moab. I think the Pickles like that, uh, another great trail, and then Pritchett's like that. But everything else is so, it's not very scenic. You're down in the canyon, but it's a little more challenging and has a lot more of the iconic obstacles, the stuff that people see. So I think Pritchett is one. And then going to the other side, Cliffhanger, only because <laughs> the, the name is descriptive. <laughs> if you're, <laughs> you're hanging off a cliff. <laughs> right. You know, you spend mo- you spend about half that first trail, you know, the first part of that trail working your way up to the Mesa. And then you take this hard turn and you're you're on this cliffside and you run that cliffside 
pretty much all the way out um, with, you know, you take some little diversions in based on where they could put the trail, but most of the last part of that trail until you make the turnaround and come back, it's an out and back trail where Pritchett really isn't. Um, you go out to the end of the cliff, you know, the big, the, you know, go down cliffhanger and go out, you do the, the overlook and then you come back. So when you go down cliffhanger, the obstacle going out, you still got to come up it Ooh. coming back. So mm-hmm. not a super technical trail. It's just that one kind of iconic obstacle. Everybody thinks it's actually cliffhanger. And then, yeah, literally you, you can hop out of your Jeep while you're waiting in line to hit cliffhanger, which is, which is pretty standard. And you're five feet from the edge of the cliff that drops down into, there's actually another trail at the bottom of the, of the bottom there, but it's thousands of feet down and you can just sit there in your Jeep and watch all the like side by sides go through this big loop and you're seeing it, but it's like this five mile loop, but you can actually see it. Like it's just a hot wheels crack oh, and you're man, watching awesome. these guys go down on that. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. So that's one you got to hit. And then uh, the other ones that, you know, kind of don't require really that much of a built rig. If you just want to kind of go out there and enjoy Obviously, Hell's Revenge. Everybody wants to go to Hell's mm-hmm. Revenge. I think, yeah, I think um, that's the, one of the most iconic. Yeah, that's the thing. thing. Yeah. I, it's probably the most, right? I think. Yeah, I think I, I think it's the one that. most people know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, just because, like, you know, Kia's gone out there and filmed commercials. And, you know, everybody goes, well, we we ran our Kia Sportage through Hell's Revenge. Like, so everybody knows that. <laughs> Look, a Crown Victoria two-wheel drive <laughs> ran Hell's Revenge. It, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, it's not a hard trail. Yeah. Like, you could do it. Like, you know, you could take a stock Jeep out there and, and knock it out, no problem, especially mm-hmm. if you know the lines. Um, there's some optional cool stuff in there, like the elevator that 99% of people don't even do anyway. You've got the early out option. You've got the cool little overview at the confluence there over the river. So there's just so much cool stuff uh, that I think everybody kind of knows about Hell's Revenge. And then obviously Poison Spider. Again, not a hard trail, uh, but a lot of good, cool scenery, a lot of cool ups and downs, high angle type stuff. Um, you know, you got the V notch in there. Everybody likes to get the pictures of the flex and then you can add on to the end of poison can you know, you can poison spiders, what they call a lollipop. So you go out, you make a turn, you do a big circle and you come back. But off of that lollipop circle is so much other stuff. You know, there's the skyway, there's where Eagles dare, there's golden spike. You can go up the golden rent, you can go up the gold bar rim. So there's all kinds of stuff, or you can just hang tough and just do poison spider and come back and be done, you know, be done in a few hours. So, um, yeah, I would say on the easier end, probably Poison Spider, Hell's Revenge. On more of the harder end, the stuff you see more on YouTube would probably be Cliffhanger and Pritchett Canyon. Nice. Well, I think, yeah. I think I've got kind of a similar list, um, but I want to throw a couple more in there. Um, so we'll start like you did with the, the – well, you can start with the easier trail, but we'll start with the <laughs> easier trails. Um, if you're looking for super easy, um, something just to kind of get warmed up, this is someone I would take who's very, very new into wheeling or – has never experienced anything off camber before. Um, I would take them probably first and foremost on fins and things during the day. Um, it, I mean, yeah. it's, it's just yeah, such an so. easy That's trail, but it's, it's fun. Yeah. And as long as you don't do both sections, it's a quick, I mean, you could probably be through the first section in an hour or two, depending yep. on how fast yep. the trail's moving um, and what the traffic's looking like. Um, then, <laughs> I would um, turn around and go back, especially if it's a full moon that night or you got a lot of light out there, go back at night and do that same trail, the same section at night. Um, totally different trail. Totally different trail. Um, yep, totally yep, different yep, things yep. to watch out for. You've got to really concentrate where the black marks are. Um, but that level of darkness kind of throws a little curveball at you. Um, and especially if you've got a passenger who isn't used to wheeling, um, it's both exciting and terrifying. But after that, it makes the harder stuff not that scary. <laughs> Wheeling uh, at night, man, it's a different it's a different thing. It makes yeah. you focus to a whole other yeah. level. So from there, um, I think I would do. Let's see, I'm gonna throw one at you. Uh, definitely the pickle. Um, the pickle is nothing extremely difficult, but I think it, it's it's a blast every time I've been through there. Um, and I'm not sure if it's still open. I think I heard rumors about it being shut down by mashed potatoes. That- yeah, I heard the same thing. Um, yeah, I think it actually was. I don't know if they opened it back up, but there was some talk. I don't, I haven't followed back up on that, but I know somebody was out there posting on social media saying last ride ever on mashed potatoes, and well, they went and wrote a bunch of mashed stuff. Mashed potatoes so. was cool because it just seemed like it looked like an entirely different. Well, I mean, Moab itself looks like a different planet, but this for sure looked like you were on like the surface of the moon. 
Um, and it's pretty wild instead of being out in something like a Dune movie. <laughs> um, so pickle and mashed potatoes is a good one. Um, and then, like you said, uh, poison spider. Um, then you've got gold bar, gold spike. You've got the crack. You've got split off. Where eagles dare is, if you've got someone afraid of heights, it's a good way to break them in. Um, <laughs> it's it's terrifying. Yep. The first time I went on where eagles dare, I I really and you can bleep this out. I wanted to shit my pants. <laughs> um, Dude, it's just straight up, straight down, straight, straight up, straight, straight down, down, straight, straight up, straight down. down. And the angle, the there's time. there's not a video on the internet that does this angle justice. No, but <laughs> not even close. The freaking rock texture is like 80 grit sandpaper. You're not going it anywhere. Is. You can have going anywhere. bald ass tires and put you're it in four going. low in first gear, <laughs> and you're going to crawl down the thing like you're you're on flat ground. It's just nerve wracking. Um, it's it's wonky. So those are a couple that I think are, are really good ones to start out with. And like you said, Hell's Revenge is pretty iconic or the most iconic rather. Um, I definitely would take someone on Hell's Revenge. Uh, then the ones that I personally love to hit, um, love Pritchett Canyon, love all the obstacles on that. Love seeing the way, different ways people get up Rocker Knocker and a couple other trails or uh, obstacles up there. Send it. Send it. <laughs> the, you've got the usually you've got the older folks that have that have I don't want to say older, but people that have been going to Moab for years that'll do rocker knocker the traditional way and put your rocker on the rock, turn your tires to the left, hop and jump and skip and let it eat, yeah, and dance. then Z turn it out. Then you've got guys like you and Diesel Krentz and JP Jeremy Purick. And <laughs> you, look, you, we're just trying to make the most efficient use of our time, Caleb. That's all it is. That's what it really I'm is. I'm all about efficiency. We're just trying to be efficient. And, That's and all that is. is 100% efficient because you're taking out <laughs> this whole Z turn and, oh, and, yeah. and, you know, 10 minutes of, of strategic technical wheeling to um, about 10 seconds of just throttle out and go straight up the damn thing. <laughs> Bro, I'm just trying to get to them dunes quicker. <laughs> trying to get to that fast spot a little bit faster. Trying to get to it. Um, oh, and then. Uh, I've got to say uh, Moab Rim, too. That one is... Yes, I was hoping you would say that. Equally as terrifying. Well, actually, more terrifying love than it. I think anything. But um, that one's But fun. it's so short. It is. but It's, it's so it's, freaking short. So that one, if you've got something planned for the afternoon, if you've got... If you're going to one of the, the parties, like at Zach's, I know that uh, Rock Crawler is sponsoring something with uh, Next yep, Adventure yep. and a bunch of other people. Um, food, drinks, free beer if you're out there. Uh, even the watered down kind. Um, even the watered down kind. <laughs> for you, Utah. Welcome to Utah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. If you've got something planned for that afternoon, Moab Rim is such a good one to hit, run up, come back down, and and get all the views, get all the pictures, and and when you're done with it, you, you're kind of on a high and an adrenaline rush the rest of the day because you're like, I just I was like two thousand feet up in the air, and then my jeep was like on the side of the cliff, and I don't know. It's at least that's how it I is saw pretty it. cool. Like I, no, I was, it's very I cool. The off camber stuff, yeah. Well, it's up. It's and it is up short. the mountain, and it's off camber, so it's like it's it's a double whammy, which is. Which is but it's great. not gonna it's not gonna kill your senses for too long because it's only mm-hmm. like, it's only like a mile and a quarter up to the overlook, mm-hmm. and then you turn around and come back down. Now you can continue on past the overlook, and it goes way out into this like desert meadow, and up there's a there's like a cave up there with some high you know some cave drawings stuff like that. So you can do that. There's no more obstacles past that, and there's no more. There's no more off camp. You're just kind of boogieing along trail riding at that point. Um, but the real Moab rim that people think about, it's like a mile and a quarter up. You got a nice little overlook on the left. You go park at the overlook and turn around and come back down. But you can do it. You can do it pretty quick um, if you want to. So, um, but that's one, you know. But again, if you're going to EJS, you know, if there's, there's really three ways I think that you can ride. So if you've never been to EJS, listen up. Um, everybody wants to go to Moab. But I think a lot of people don't go for there's a whole lot of reasons. I don't want to travel. I don't want to drive, whatever. But if you're going and and you're just like, I just don't know what to do. Um, three ways, three ways that you can trail ride. Number one is you can join Red Rock four wheel. You know, you can join the Red Rock four by four group and, and you can pay them. And what I would suggest doing, if this is your first time going to Moab, or your first time going to EJS, um, set up, always plan in advance. Get yourself, you're going out there for a week. Let's say you're going out there for the whole time. Set yourself up three or four trail rides. And I say that because when you get into wheeling, people don't realize either either you're, you know, everybody says, oh, I'm going to go to Moab and I'm going to wheel every day. Okay, yeah, all right, big tough guy. 
but the real truth of it is it's Moab and there's a lot more stuff to do and you can get out there and wheel. You're going to get, you're going to get some trail fatigue. Like it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it just happens. It happens every time I go out there, every time I go out there and see, I'm going to go wheel five, four or five, six days in a row. It just doesn't happen. Um, unless we like deliberately schedule some shorty in there, like, you know, we'll schedule a Moab rim to be short and that's our day. And then we're going to go whitewater rafting or we're going to go zip lining or we're going to go mountain biking. We're going to go, you know, do a, do a tourist thing, whatever. So I would definitely schedule that out, whether that's with Red Rock four wheel, four wheel drive, you can pay them. They'll take you. They're great people. Like they, they know oh, the yeah. stuff they live out there. They know that you can pay them and you can kind of be, be catered to led, um, and kind of told what to do, where to go and how to do it. That's number one. Um, and, and two, they, they shut those trails down. Like when Red Rocks is on a trail, if they are on poison spider on Thursday, yeah, no one else is they on. are blocking that trail. Nobody else is getting on that trail, whether they've got 10, 15, 20, 25, 40, whatever Jeeps, nobody else is getting on that trail. They will, they are now as of even last year, they were parking Red Rockers at the trail exits and entries to block people from getting on that trail. Mm -hmm. Now, as somebody who doesn't go on those rides, it kind of pissed me off. I'm like, dude, come on, man. Let me on the freaking trail. But if that's who you're catering to and you're able to say that, be like, look, it's just us. You don't have to worry about anybody coming up on you. You don't have to worry about you're in tight sections and we're crossing traffic. So I can absolutely get that from a beginner standpoint. So I think if you're a beginner and you don't want to do a ton of research and you don't want to do a ton of planning on your own, go do that. They've got a very awesome list that they put out two lists that they put out. One is a trail rating, all the trails that they do and they rate them and they talk about them. Awesome. Awesome thing. They put out, you can just Google that. It's everywhere on the internet. The second thing they put out is the trail list by day of what trail is being used on what day. So if you're not in the group that wants to go with the red rocks, you can now be in group two. You just mm -hmm. want to go do your own thing. He's like, I just want to go to Moab. I, I know how to wheel. I'm an experienced wheel. I've just never been to Moab. You can take that chart. And you can look at that chart and go, okay, well, these are the trails that are open. Da, 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 da. And those trails, you can go, it's BLM land out there. So if you if you can get on it, you can go wheel it. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're an experienced wheeler, you got a group, whatever, you can definitely do that. You look at the chart, this chart, this, you know, this trail, this trail, this trail are open. Let's pick one. Let's go. And you're good. No problem. The other one, if you're kind of tied into the industry at all, or you're super into social media, you're following where all these manufacturers are riding and stuff. There are manufacturer and industry rides throughout throughout EJS. Um, it is it is very often like when we go, you know, I kind of have to choose because like, well, we got Rock Crawlers doing this ride on Thursday, but Terraflex is doing this ride on Thursday, but then we have a distributor also doing this ride. Mm -hmm. So you almost have to plan out like, well, they're going to Metal Masher and they're going here. Well, I really want to ride here, so I'm going to go with this one, and it just becomes that thing. So that's kind of the third way to do it if you're if you're really experienced from a Moab standpoint. And you already go out to Moab knowing, all right, this year I want to ride, dun, 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 and dun. then you can just kind of make your schedule to go out with the industry guys. We're kind of in the middle if you want to do your own thing, or if you're a beginner, just go out with the Red Rock. So I do want to tell people just because you don't go on a Red Rocks ride, it's still Moab, mm -hmm. it's still BLM land. You are still free to ride. Oh yeah, they don't um, they don't own the trails. <laughs> they don't own they can, the trails. They now they do have some, some permits trails, and stuff yeah. like that. But, and and I don't recommend I don't recommend blowing by their trail guard. Like yeah, let, let's be let's be friendly, let's be courteous. Let's we don't want to cause issues in Moab because there's elements in Moab and in Grand County, which is where Moab is in Utah, that don't want us there anyway. Yeah, they're already and, to shut and they're down. just looking for a reason, yeah. right? So heed my advice, listen to this podcast. Right. Do it one of those three ways. And and then of course, obviously follow tread lightly, leave it better than you found it, all that good stuff. But when you when you're choosing where to ride and how to ride, just make sure you're in one of those three categories so that we can continue to enjoy it for years to come. Others can continue to enjoy it for years to come because if you go out there and you you know jack it up during EJS, that's going to make it harder for the rest of us that go rest the, you know the other 51 weeks out of the year uh, that just want to go out and enjoy nature and enjoy the trails and do that. So you know don't be a don't be a butthead. <laughs> do it do it right do it right plan research have a plan and just go out there and do it right. And it's, that's, it just makes it more doable for everybody. Yeah. And I think yeah. the only thing that I would add to that, um, especially if you've never been out there, but even if you have been out there or if it's been a couple of years, um, grab the latest edition. I think it's fun trucks is the book that comes out every year that updates the trails and what's going yeah, yeah, on yeah. full of pictures. Yeah. And the guys who, who create that book do a fantastic job with that. Um, but also download your favorite app. Um, 
Onyx, um, Gaia. There, um, yep, there are some many- Trail guides, I think is. I use Avenza. Avenza. I think I use Avenza, and then I buy the maps from. Yeah. All my maps are from Cardo Tracks. Yeah. And then when you buy Cardo Tracks, um, you can just load it into Avenza. I, think, I love that. I think one. BFG has their own in-house app now. They do. Uh, yeah. On Trail, yep. I use Onyx personally. It's it's been updated really well. Their their yep. continuous yep. pictures being updated on trail conditions and status. Um, yeah, and app. it's it's pretty accurate as far as how close it gets you. But I can also record my GPS ride through there. Uh, and save routes and stuff. So I think that's pretty cool, but definitely have some kind of supplemental thing, even if you think you know the trail, uh, because there's been a lot of times where people get stuck in a trail and then they have no way to get out or they break down and they got to walk out and they have no clue where they are. Um, So definitely have some kind of app, maybe bring a phone charger or something or some way to make sure your phone stays plugged in. Um, That way keeps you safe, but we'll have, I think we can do a whole another episode on wheeling safely, no matter where you are and the things you need. That might be a good one to do later on. But other than that, I think that is it for this EJS talk because um, now I'm starting to get FOMO and I want to go. <laughs> should I give a couple of insider <laughs> tips before we go or should I leave that for another episode? Um, should I give a couple of insider tips? Are, are they EJS specific? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, they yeah. are Moab. They it. are Moab specific only because EJS has gotten so expensive. So a couple of things to do. Everybody, when you, you know, everybody goes to Moab and they look in Moab to stay, right? They look in Moab. But what you don't realize until you get there is that Moab is actually very, very small. Um, and Highway 191 that goes through Moab actually kind of starts having civilization five, six, seven miles north of town, and it actually continues on down, I don't know, 15, 20 miles south of town, all the way down to the dunes and then on through. But um, I learned a long time ago, Airbnb, number one, Airbnb or Verbo is the best way to get a place um, in Moab for sure. And I have found that south of town um, that's more Spanish residential. Valley. Spent, yep, exactly. Getting down towards Spanish Valley, you know, that's where the entrance, you know, getting south of town, that's where Hell's Revenge and Fins and things is. That's getting down towards BFE. That's getting down towards the end of Pritchett Canyon behind the rocks. So there's certainly a ton of trails in Moab, but I have found personally, um, for a couple of reasons, I stay south of town. There's a specific neighborhood I like to go to every time. I've actually gotten, there's a tiny house neighborhood now, uh, edge of the desert, I think I'm going to try out. I'll report back on that after edge of, uh, yeah, edge of the desert, edge of desert, something like that. I'll report back on that after Mob Moab, but it looks pretty great. The location looks awesome. And another benefit that I is usually you're driving north into town to meet up for the group rides. And there's a really, really cool little coffee stand on the left. <laughs> yep. as, you, as you come into Moab and they have awesome coffee. They have a little chocolate covered coffee beans. Mm-hmm. And I go there every at least every morning. Um, so yeah, I say stay safe the town only because I mean that's where all the industry guys stay. Like we've we found that out years ago. Right. That's where we go. It's quiet. Um, plus and then make sure. I know you're in the desert, and I get heavy Italian food. May not you may not think it's there, but Jay's. Oh my gosh, you yes. got to go to Jay's. Got to go. Have to, Jay's. to go to freaking Jay's. It's so good. Yeah. Um, they have this in-house made tortellini that is freaking mm-hmm. to die for. I get it every time I go. Uh, sometimes I get it with the chicken. Sometimes I get it without. But definitely Jay's. Get there early um, because those they do get they do get away. They got a lot of seating, um, but there's a lot of people that want to go there. It's right there on the main drag there. Yeah. 191 yeah, through Jay's is um, fantastic That's yeah and then you know every time i'm there pub food grill food just normal mm-hmm. stuff moab diner kind of everybody goes there you got to go there at least once good chicken tenders good milkshakes you know the normal the normal stuff um not really a chefy thing like jay's but you know go there but explore like don't don't go out there wheeling the whole time like take a day yeah 100 take a day to take just drive and explore to, and find cool yeah. stuff to do go see the colorado river do some kind of exploration mm-hmm. or some so whether you're with a family or with yourself like Go find something to do. Take a day that's not wheeling, um, 100%. Because Moab is so freaking beautiful, man. Um, there's it's, so many things to do other so than wheeling. I mean, wheeling's awesome. Yeah. But, but there's, there's so many there's other things so to do. There's so much other stuff to do and things to check out. Even locally, you don't have to drive very far. Um, it's, it's incredible. There's a skydiving center um, just north of Moab at the airport. Um, yep. So if that's yep. your thing, you can jump out of a plane and, and have some fun. Only other thing I think I would add on to that, and I th- this is a given, but guys, don't, don't drink and drive. Um, Yes, the the alcohol in in Utah, especially around Moab, is is watered <laughs> down. It, it is weaker. Yep. But if you're not used to the elevation, between elevation sickness and alcohol, you'll not have a good time. And no one wants that on the trail. Um, so don't don't be stupid. Um, we're we're seeing a lot of people just act chaotic. Don't be that trail. guy. Don't be that guy. Don't, don't ruin be that everybody. guy. Don't ruin um, for everybody. Else. And I know it, 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 it shouldn't have to be said, but please don't drink and drive and, and cause you know problems out out on the trail for everybody 
But I think there that's you it. go. <laughs> Don't be that guy. Caleb out here laying down the knowledge today. He's on fire now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you knew man. I was going to do it. I you, had to do you, it. You had to do it. It's all right. <laughs> he shoots. He scores. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Tread lightly, people. Tread lightly. Tread lightly. Have fun. All right. Well, that was, um, man, I thought we could actually do a whole episode today, but I'm glad you kind of. I'm glad you kind of called the uh, called the play here and and went with the the special edition so that we can get it out. But it is Friday. Uh, EJS starts tomorrow. For those of you that are already out there enjoying Moab, um, I hate you. Uh, <laughs> but I'll be out there. I'll be out there soon. We'll be out there. What do we What do we got? Like what do we got? Like eight weeks? It's just a couple seven, weeks. Eight weeks yeah, Caleb? we'll, we'll like be out there. Yeah, like I said, we'll do another we'll episode on Mob and explain what that is and what we're going to be doing out there. I think we'll probably do a podcast or two while we're out there. Get some interviews. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, get some interviews and do some stuff out there for sure. Yeah, and then thank you. And now I have FOMO for EJS, and I'm going to look at plane tickets real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go to Moab. I've got so many I'm friends going go. from Colorado. Say, so, hey, let me just jump in the passenger seat with you. I could see it now Monday morning. All right, Kelly, are we ready to film an episode? Uh, I'm in Moab. Yeah, I'm in a, yeah. So about that, I'm coming right back. And then I'm gonna hate you too. I'm coming right back. I hate them all. <laughs> but it really is beautiful, guys. If you haven't gone, it's you got to put it on your list. You got to go. So Moab, EJS. I think EJS is a good way to step into Moab if you've never been. Um, definitely do that. So. Um, and I can't wait to get back out there um, again. I, I'll go to Moab whenever. I don't really care. So, um, so that's gonna wrap. That's gonna wrap up today's mailbag. Even though there was no mail, we kind of made our own bag. So, but EJS warrants that. EJS is special enough. It's a big. It's a big enough thing. It warrants that. So, um, Kayla, appreciate you coming out, being on the being on the show again. Everyone else, thank you for tuning in and listening or watching from wherever you may be and whatever you may be doing. Appreciate you taking time out of your day to come spend it with us. As always, remember to like, remember to comment, remember to subscribe. Got to get that like, comment, and subscribe. Got to hit those buttons. Got to leave those reviews. Got to make those comments because you never know. Your comment might make it onto an episode. It might be an episode or it might be a mailbag question. You never know. So with that said, that is how we are going to leave it for this weekend. Uh, EJS people, enjoy it out there. I know it's going to be a little cold, but have fun. Uh, and bad day in Moab is better than a good day anywhere else anyway. So that is how we will leave it for this. Everyone else have a great weekend. Uh, yeah, the setting in a FOMO is real. <laughs> Everyone else have a great weekend. We will see you next week here on dirt to dust. You've been listening to dirt to dust presented by outlaw off road, the premier off road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.